Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I'm just getting a question up that I was wondering if he could answer. Hang on. Sorry. My time, I was trying to download something and then it was going live and I'm all confused. So welcome, everyone. Sorry for that strange start there. A bit confusing. But I was wondering, and the question I want you to think about as you were coming in, was to tell us what treasures you've found this week. Okay, so what nature treasures have you found this week? I'm just going to type that up. Because I would love to know what you found. This week, I saw pheasants that I've never really seen. Well, I probably have seen when I was children, but I haven't seen very regularly. Um, there's a few people coming in to say hello. Let's see. Hi, Juliana. Hi, Marley. Hi, Betsy. Sophie, Sophie Oscar, Corey, Lanier, Peter and Lucy. So many of you. Peter and Lucy reminds me of Narnia. We're just reading that, my family. Alicia's here. Percy's here. Oh, blue tits in Granddad's nest box. Oh, how exciting. Some buds and flowers. Someone found a cool, cool stone. One of my children did a geocache and they found some treasure in there. Hi, tiger and bird. So many of you. Daffodils, Daisy and a heron. Oh, yes, I saw your drawing of a heron, Percy, as well. Lots of snails, robins and pine cones. Yes, we've been finding some of those really little ones. A letter-shaped rock. Which letter was it that people found? I love... Someone found a salamander. Someone who lives close to me found a salamander on their drive. I'm going to have to get the bus down there and see if I can find some salamanders. That's amazing. Lots of daffodils. And someone got to walk goats, like walk them like you walk a dog. That is amazing. You've had some amazing weeks. Oh, some people have seen a deer on their walk. Worms. Yeah, we've seen a lot of worms. Sadly, we saw a lot of dead worms because there was so much rain that a few of them are drowned near us. A lot of um, a brimstone butterfly. I'm going to have to look that up. Sorry, I'm looking through all these amazing things. A curved pine cone. Amazing. Bees are coming out more to the blossom on your nan's tree. That is amazing. I am very excited about spring happening. And it just makes me feel a lot better. Now, you might have noticed that I'm somewhere different. This is hopefully where I'm going to be doing Pathfinders from. But if the internet is a bit funny or if it's a bit fuzzy or if sometimes I cut out, please let me know so that I can make sure that this is the right place to be. Someone found a hedgehog that was dead. Yep, that's the only hedgehog I've ever seen was dead as well. Um, Gabriel and Lachlan saw a weasel starting to change from winter white to dark. Wow, you're all finding fantastic things. This is brilliant. If you've got a chance later to read through what people have found, that would be fantastic. Now, we are going to be talking about unicorns. Now, you might be thinking, Rachel, this is nature, um, sure, and you talked about science and unicorns. Mm. But do you know what? What I've discovered with home education, which I know most of you are doing, is that you can make connections in all sorts of places. You don't have to just follow the one path and think that is it. We're all about finding paths here, finding different ways that things connect. And my daughter loves unicorns. And I thought, why not do about unicorns? Learn about horses, maybe some pegasi, maybe some alicorn corns. Alicorns, is that what you say? Where it's both wings and horns. There are a lot of different connections that we can do and we can learn from. So let's get up our story now as you know i just mentioned i've got a new little setup here and as i was off making a cup of tea somebody came in and interrupted and recorded themselves on the video so i'm going to show that video now and see what they've got to tell us let's just make sure i've got it here here we go so we're on the search for unicorns I'm not too sure we will find them. Some people believe that there's no truth at all in unicorns. For me, when I see nature, I see narwhals, I see rhinos, I see horned beetles. It doesn't seem that strange to me that maybe at one point, and maybe somewhere in the world, there might be horses with horns somewhere, and maybe, just maybe, they'll be magical. I don't know. Now, I actually couldn't find any horses near me either. I don't know if that is a reason to say that they don't exist. No, just because you can't see something or find it doesn't necessarily mean, I guess, that it doesn't exist. So I couldn't find any horses, but I did find some facts about 
happen. So horses are part of the equine family. We've got zebras, although in my house we call them zebras because my husband's American. You've got donkeys, you've got ponies, maybe unicorns, maybe pegasi, who knows, and horses. So we're going to talk about those today. And while we're doing it, I'm going to be looking out for some ingredients for a special portion. So all of those have long skulls and hooves. The main equine family members that we see around Britain are horses and ponies and sometimes donkeys. So horses and ponies sometimes get mixed up. Sometimes people think ponies are just small horses, but they're actually very different. A big difference is how they've adapted in how they look. So you've got horses have a more muscular body, they've got longer, thinner legs, thinner coats, thinner manes, and um, ponies, they're smaller, they're stockier, they've got shorter legs and thicker legs, they've got thicker mane and a thicker coat. They're also very different in their personalities, which I think is quite interesting. So ponies tend to be a lot more stubborn and, oh, there's some very angry dogs over there. And horses tend to be a little bit more docile and gentle. Now, I've also found some great things for my portions. Not the flowers, I'm not gonna pick those, but over here, there are hundreds and hundreds, the dogs are at it again, hundreds of beech nut shells and I wondered if I ground those up whether they would work for my special portion. You know one thing I love about nature is the cyclical part of it, the fact that it goes round in a cycle just like the wheel of the year that we talked about last week and I think about these trees behind me and the cycle that they go through the way that the leaves show that. So I collected some of these leaves for my magic portion. I'm going to crush them up once I've dried out a little bit more. The last leaves of autumn really, from last autumn and before the new green leaves appear. But horses as well have a cycle just like all living things. So I've actually got a piece of paper in front of me because it is hard to remember. When I was little I loved horses. Every year on my Christmas list I put horse or pony at the top of my list. We didn't have a house or a garden that would fit a pony in, but I was convinced that Santa would maybe bring me one. He didn't, but that's okay. I used to pretend my bike was a horse and I would have also had a branch on a tree in the woods that I would sit on and ride. So I used to know lots about horses, but I have forgotten. So I've got some of my list here. So they start off as falls. You remember if you've ever seen a horse being born either on the TV or maybe in real life, they have those long spindly legs, but they can walk really quickly, can't they? And they grow very, very quickly as well. In that first year of their life, they pretty much grow 90% of what they're going to grow to in their whole life. That is pretty amazing. So yearlings have long legs, but they're obviously a bit stronger and they're a year old. So they've got a little bit more about them than foals. Then under four years, a male horse is known as a colt and a female horse is known as a filly. So they're kind of young horses, maybe a bit like teenagers, I guess. Then they get a little bit older. When they're four, they are adults. Now my youngest kid is four. He is not near adulthood yet, but for horses they are. And then when they're 20, they're called geriatric. And that's when you'll start to see them maybe slowing down and get a little bit older. So they go through that life cycle as well. Very similar to us, but in a kind of quicker pace too. So horses have a life cycle. I wonder what the life cycle of a unicorn would be. Maybe it lasts forever. I don't know. So I'm going to walk a little bit further to find some more things for my special portion. And as I'm walking, I thought I would tell you some more interesting facts about horses. This first one I am very jealous of. Horses can sleep lying down and standing up, which I think will be very, very handy when I'm in a long queue and I'm getting a little bored and I can just have a, a little nod off, but it maybe would also be dangerous because I might fall asleep in unexpected places. Pound for pound, so if you kind of matched size for size, horses and ponies, ponies are stronger, which makes sense, but horses can get really, really fast as well. Remember when we talked about the wolves, that they could run so quickly, like 50, 60 miles per hour. The fastest horse ever recorded was 55 miles per hour, which is pretty quick. Do you ever go on a nature walk and 
come around a corner and you see something very unexpected and it feels almost like you found something that no one else has seen or experienced I felt like that just now I came down a path that I just thought went into a little area of woods and then as I came down it opened into this very quiet calm peaceful part by a river that I didn't even realize was there I feel like I found something and discovered something that no one else has this is kind of ancient looking tree in the middle it is it's pretty magical in fact as I came down it was almost like I might discover a unicorn standing there that's what I love about unicorns not the kind of rainbow poop and the all the kind of almost silly things funny things that we talk about with unicorns but I love the idea of a creature being out there that we've never discovered that there's just whispers of and so of course my magical portion is to try and make a unicorn appear so I've collected some things I'm gonna go off and collect a few more things and then we'll see how this portion comes together fingers crossed I knew I had found a special place because I spotted in the tree that I mentioned that looks like a kind of ancient tree. I thought, oh no, someone's left some trash and some rubbish. I looked a bit closer. It's a geocache. I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. So this is where I'll write my name on to say that I've discovered it. Congratulations if you found it intentionally or not, definitely unintentionally. So sometimes it's treasure to take and then swap. I don't have anything to swap, so I'm going to leave that treasure down. Look at these. And I'm going to write my name. Ah, so exciting! And do you know what? I put Pathfinders down because I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for you all. So I'm going to pop this treasure back and then keep collecting for my portion. So I've been grinding my portion together. I've got the last secret ingredient to add in. My spell, well, I wanna, I wanna find a unicorn. So I'm gonna do this spell. I've been told that it will make a unicorn appear beside me. I'm very, very excited because, I mean, I decided that we were going to do this Pathfinders about unicorns and then I couldn't find any, so it has got to work. So last ingredient. It's rose petals, just handy because I had some left over from my Mother's Day flowers. Right, deep breath. I think I'm going to need a countdown. Three, two, one, and hang on, it wasn't supposed to turn me into a unicorn. Thankfully, I have been restored back to non-unicorn status. I know I introduced our story then, and then I ended up going to the nature walk. These things happen. Now, if anyone wants to know my secret spell to turn it into a unicorn, to be honest, I don't know. I think I'll get in a lot of trouble if I turn you all into unicorns. But I could maybe give some clues if people want to try that out. So geocaching, somebody said, I can't believe someone suggested this, that I might have put that geocache there on purpose. Nope, I am not that organized. It was there and we've, I found it by accident and then I've gone back since with my kids to find it as well and they found some others. So geocache is a great way to explore nature, but no, I did not put it there on purpose. I'd like to, I wish I was that organized, but I'm not. Right, so because I did the story and got the story in the nature walk mixed up, we're gonna go to a quiz. And the thing about the nature portions, I know that it was almost a little bit silly when we talk about, maybe when we talk about doing magic spells and magic portions, and some of you might think that's just a load of rubbish. But the fact is there are lots of things that nature can do for us. And to be honest, that's how a lot of stuff was discovered by people experimenting with different mixtures, and different plants, and different treasures from nature and seeing what happened. Now, big disclaimer, Anything we talk about next does not mean you can go out and eat any of these things. Do not eat anything in nature unless your grown-up is very experienced and can figure it out. So that is my big disclaimer. But let's do a little quiz and see what treasures and kind of, I guess, real-life portions that nature can provide for us. Let's get it up. I'm trying something new. I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to do this quiz together. So let's... Get my face down here and let's try out this quiz okay so here we go so willow bark 
how does that help us? So these are different ways that almost like these, I suppose, medicinal portions can help us. Does it help your aches and pains? Does it stop your hair going gray? Is it great for cleaning windows? What do you think? I'm going to go away. And obviously, I wrote this, so I do know. I'll give you a bit of time to think. It is great for aches and pains. Now, Dr. spent a lot of time researching this, and that has to be done in a very particular way. So, I do not try these at home. Poppies, are they good at turning you into a frog and stopping pain or sorting out sore muscles? What do we think? Now, this is one you have to be very specially careful for because poppies can cause lots of problems as well. So, hmm, it will not turn you into a frog, but it will stop pain. Next one. Snowdrops. We've talked about these before. So, a snowdrop's great for poison, if you ever need that, dresses for fairies, or protecting the brain tells you at the top there that there are actually two answers to this. I'm going to say, I think they'd make amazing dresses for fairies, but I'm going to go for poison and protecting the brain. That's why it's tricky, because if you don't get it right, you could, instead of looking after your brain, you could poison someone. Aloe vera, is that good to help burns? Does it help you run faster? Is it great for toilet cleaning? What do you think? Aloe vera is great for helping the burns. Next one. Lemon. Does that create a magical portal when you use it? Is it good for hair dye or is it good for cleaning? What do you think? Speaking of hair dye, I dyed my hair at the weekend for the first time ever and you can't really tell the difference. Right, let's see. It is actually good for hair dye and for cleaning. And we've got our last one coming up. Lavender, does it help headaches? Does it enable you to speak to animals? Does it keep away moths? What do you reckon? So lavender has been proven to help headaches and to keep away moths. That's why some people have little lavender bags in their closets and in their drawers. Brilliant. How many did we get? We got nine out of nine. It took us two and a half minutes. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. I can also pop that link. I might do it now. Pop that link in the chat if you want to have a go at doing it yourself as well. There we go. This is that's not a Twinkle website, so all the disclaimers about if you're accessing anything outside of Twinkle. Right, now I'm going to tell you, share our story, and then we're going to do some moving around, and then we're going to see all of your wonderful things. So let's hope I press the right button now. Get ready for a story, grown-ups. You've got about six minutes to grab a cup of tea. Let's do this. Rachel left the camera running, so I thought I'd introduce myself. Of course, you know who I am, don't you? Obviously, I'm Captain America. No, I'm not Captain America. I'm someone from Minecraft. No, I don't even know what Minecraft is. I'm Mike the Knight. No, I mean, he's a brave young hero, but I am braver. I'm definitely not young, though. In fact, stories of me go back hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. My name is Perseus. Yes, I'm sure you've heard of me. If you haven't, well, I've got a story or two to tell you. I'm actually not here to talk about myself, although I do, I do love to talk about myself, so I will do that a bit. I'm here to talk about a horse, a very special horse horse. Now, to tell you about the horse, we need to go back to one of my, I don't know, greatest escapades, most amazing adventures, feat of bravery and might, call it what you will, but it was one of my first adventures and it was to defeat the Gorgon Medusa. Now, Medusa had this ability where she could look at you with your eyes, with not your eyes, with her eyes, and if she looked into your eyes, she would turn you to stone, just 
like that. She also, probably important to mention, had a hair that, hair that was full of snakes. Well, she didn't really have hair. She had snakes instead of hair. So she was very, very ter terrifying. Everyone was scared of her. Everyone, of course, except me. So I went with my cap of invisibility, had some of my friends, the gods and goddesses of Greek, of Greece, help me. So I had my invisibility cap. I had my sword to chop off her head. And of course, I had my extremely shiny shield. So off I went to her lair. It was dark. I'm not going to lie, most people would have been scared, but not me. I crunched over what I think maybe were bones or stones that used to be bones underneath my feet. The walls were dripping with water, kind of slimy with moss and I just stepped deeper and deeper into the tunnels until eventually I knew I was right outside her lair. I knew because I could hear all this hissing of the snakes. It was terrifying, but of course I couldn't go close to her because if she looked at me, then I would turn to stone and no one wants to lose Perseus and just have him as a statue. No, I couldn't let that happen to the world. So I had to come up with a plan. Obviously, first step of my plan, close my eyes. Second step of my plan, I'd already done actually, was to polish my shield so that it was shiny, so shiny, I'm going to open one of my eyes, so shiny that it was like a mirror. So my eyes are closed, I leant round the corner, I spread out my arm so that the mirror of my shield was right there. Medusa, of course, looked over, but she looked straight at the mirror, which was instead bouncing back to her and she turned to stone. I used her own power against her, which is just one of the amazing things that I've done. And so of course I ran over, chopped her head off and this is when the amazing thing happened. Out of Medusa's neck. This is gonna sound really strange. It was almost like she was giving birth and I was the midwife. Out of her came a flying horse, probably a bit bigger than this one. He was white, he had ginormous wings made of beautiful feathers, almost like shimmering in the darkness of the cave, strong legs, flowing mane, and off he flew. Now, I've had a few little adventures with Pegasus, but let me tell you something about him. Did you know that if he stepped into water, his hooves would turn the water into something magical where people, when they drank from that water, would, from that pond, would turn into the most amazing artists or poets or sculpt... Wait, some of you have been drinking from that water, I think, because I've seen some of the pictures that Rachel has been getting ready. You are amazing artists and poets, so maybe... Maybe Pegasus has been in your neck of the woods. Hmm. Well, Pegasus was known for being pretty amazing. And there was one other hero, Bellafron. I don't like to talk about it much because, you know, there might be a little bit of friendly rivalry between us. But Bellafron decided that he wanted to capture Pe Pegasus and use Pegasus to help defeat more monsters. He got a golden bridle from Athena. He managed to capture him and off they went on tons of adventures. But Bellafron got very, very big headed. He started to think like, hmm, look, here I am doing all these amazing things. Maybe I'm as good as those gods and goddesses up there. I think I'm going to fly up there with Pegasus and get my rightful place. So off he went up and up and up. Well, you know Zeus, I'm sure you've heard of Zeus. Very angry person, usually has a big beard. <sighs> he was very cross about this. And then, well, he sent a gadfly, a bit like a horse fly, that obviously if it bit a horse would be really, really painful for the horse. So he sent off this gadfly, fired it down through the sky. It whacked into Pegasus. Pegasus dropped to the ground. Bellafron fell off. And Zeus ended up taking Pegasus back up to his Mount Olympus. And people say, that Pegasus carries a lightning bolt from Zeus on his back. And some say, if you look up on a very, very dark night, you will see 
Pegasus in the sky above you. But I couldn't possibly tell you whether that was true or not. Now, anyway, I think Rachel's coming back. She's going to get another cup of tea. She's always getting another cup of tea. So I best go. Oh, well, yes, I do like my tea. Great story then. Actually, when I tried to find stories about unicorns, myths about unicorns that have been passed on from generation to generation, finding those about unicorns was actually really tricky. If any of you find them, please let me know. There are lots of stories written today about unicorns by particular authors, but not as many or as easily found as say stories about Pegasus. Anyway, let's check to see if you were listening. We're gonna have four quick questions and then one thinking question. Just shout these out or tell the person next to you. We've got, what creatures covered Medusa's head? What creatures covered her head? I watched a video this week of giant ones of these being stuck in someone's ceiling in a different country. So. Not my favourite animal. It was a, oh, it was snakes, lots of snakes. How was Pegasus born? And this is something new that I've learned this week. So there's a few different myths around this. Some people think that the head of Medusa dropped into the ocean and then that turned into Pegasus. But basically, he was born from Medusa's neck. Very strange. Next one, what special powers, powers did Pegasus have? There's a few answers you could have for these. I'm gonna see if anyone's doing it in the comments down there. So flight, flight would be the massive one, yet the really important one. Um, I also would think that, well, the way that the um, Pegasus could transform water is one that's talked about a lot. And then even the fact that it could carry the thunderbolts as well might be one. Let's see, last quick question. Where can you find a Pegasus now? See if any of you know, because I, I did mention it. Well, Perseus did mention this a little bit, but let's see if any of you know. Where can we find Pegasus now? Give you a few moments. Yep, in the dark sky, because there is a constellation named after Pegasus. Also, if you watch My Little Pony, you might see some Pegasi on there as well, because Pegasus is the name of a particular horse, but it's also the name of a type of magical creature. Okay, I don't know if anyone else likes My Little Pony. We're big fans in my house. All right. And the thinking question, the same one we have every time. What are the truths in these stories? Can we learn anything about what the people who told them believed? Could we learn any lessons from them? It, this gets tricky with some of these because some of them, there's a lot of bad choices made in a lot of Greek myths as well. And sometimes it seems so fantastical. You think, what has this got to do with me? But it can help us understand how other people understood the world. Right. Anyone ready to move about? I am. Well, I say that I'm ready to make you all move about. So most horses can't fly. But... Horses do move in some special ways. They're called gates, the way that they move, not the gate like this, G-A-I-T. And the first way that horses move is by walking. But did you know that when they walk, there's always a hoof on the floor? So they have a kind of four-step gait, a four-beat gait. It's going to be one leg, then another, then another, then another. So I want you to stand up and just walk on the spot, just walking. The next one is trotting. So trotting is a little bit quicker, so I want you to speed up a little bit. And when horses trot, they put two feet down at the same time. So it's a two-beat gait, they're kind of diagonal legs. Okay, now I want you to speed up a little bit, a bit faster. A canter is a three-beat gait. So you've got two and then one and then if in fact it's hard to explain without actually seeing the whole studio but canter is a three beat gait and it's a bit quicker and then i'm sure you've all heard of this one gallop a gallop is actually the same as a walk but just very very fast so each foot is coming down separately it's a four beat gait so you should be running really really fast on the spot right now all right so let's see if you can remember what those are i'm going to hold them up and you need to do it just on the spot. I don't want anyone galloping into their doors and banging their heads. Right, are we ready? So just go down to a trot now. A bit like a jog. 
just trot in. We're going to go to a walk. Then we're going to go back up to a trot. Up to a canter. Gallop as quick as you can. Oh, there's a log coming. Jump over it. You're going to slow down a bit to a canter. Oh, you've seen something you want to chase after. You're galloping again as fast as you can. Down to a canter. We're going to trots. We're going to walk. You remember what I said about horses being able to fall asleep standing up? Have a little snooze because you might be tired out from all of that. Well done. Oh, some of you are my little pony fans. Yes, Rainbow Dash is a Pegasus. If you're a Pegasus and a unicorn, you're called an alicorn. And I think it's Twilight Sparkle and alicorn. Maybe. Anyway, now you can wake up, you can have a sit, and we're going to see some of the amazing things that you have done this week. And then I will show you some of the things that I've been making. Get my face up here. Oh, no, you don't want to see my face. Let's take my face off, actually. So lots of amazing things. As always, your grown-ups can email it to me. And some of you have been through your grown-ups, sending me little messages about what you've been up to this week with your nature walks and so on. I love that. So I definitely welcome any of that. And they can pop it on Facebook as well. So look at Willow, Caden, and Tony. This is kind of a show of all the things that they've been doing, okay? They've got those amazing balanced collages in the back. They've got their frogs in the front. Beautiful. And look at little Wolfie or one of Wolfie's cousins in the back as well. Amazing. Daniel, Peter, Aaron, Miriam, and Ruth. Ruth is the youngest, so I don't know if any of these were hers. I think maybe the beautiful stickers. Look at these lovely pictures. Well done, everyone from that family. Liliana and Talitha, they have been very busy exploring. And Liliana, I loved your message to me. I have sent a reply. You've given me some feed for thought with the things that you've noticed. Look at those beautiful crowns. And Amir, as always, does beautiful, bright, coloured artwork. I love it. Isla and the wolf is called George. has got a lovely picture there. And Logan has made a whole kind of zoo with all sorts of different creatures in Minecraft. He's even got a logo and everything. It's brilliant. Grace, I loved the old 3D bird. I especially love the wings as it just completely covered in kind of palm, old palm leaves. Fantastic. And Myla, now it might, I think it's the same Myla that did both of these. So I put them together. Her beautiful weaving is so colorful and each color had a meaning as well. And then those are actual biscuits down there. They don't, they look like flowers. They're biscuits. Beautiful. Percy has been very busy. So she's been going through her passport and she's been learning all about Darwin. So that's what that boat is to do with. She's spotted some herons like we heard earlier. And she's even been doing Pathfinder Plus where she's been finding out a little bit more about what makes seasons happen. Wonderful. Romany, look at that crowd. I love it. The half sun and the half dark. And Rose made honey out of daffodils. And if any of the grown ups want the recipe, they can pop on Facebook and find where Rose's grown up has written about it. I'm going to try it. Well, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm not very good at cooking, but I will have a go at trying it. Alicia did a beautiful moon picture. And Jaden, as always, is very busy. He's got his picture from Pathfinder Plus. He's got some activities that he's been doing in that lovely balanced picture. Fantastic. Evie and Joseph, and I think there's maybe a brother or sister coming up. I'm not too sure. I've been doing their amazing wolf pictures. Fantastic. Look how shiny that moon is, Evie. Love it. Lily has done her balanced picture there. That just looks so calming. It makes me just want to relax. Also looks a bit like a flag, a country's flag as well. Lily and Daisy, amazing weaving. I've hung mine up on my window. I wonder where yours are hung up. Bella has got another bright sunshine as well. And Oscar did a pinwheel frog so that it can all move. Love it. Gracie, I love when people take the ideas from Pathfinders and do something completely different. And Gracie has used her tap it activity to make a sunny picture there. And Jacob and Isaac, that cake looks delicious. They've done some glow in the dark spring rocks. Fantastic. My son did that as well, but then my other son got the glow in the dark paint. Painted it everywhere. Thankfully, you can only see it in the dark, so that's okay. 
Juliana and Rose, I've got beautiful, beautiful pictures there. Juliana's done some weaving and Rose, I love your eye makeup, by the way, has a lovely sun there. And Pearl has got a really fiery sun, as has Coral. Look at those colours, they're perfect for the sun. And I think is that your brother? I didn't see a name, so I'm not too sure, but another lovely picture. Billy has got his Ostara display and his beautiful weaving is up there at the back. Sebi made his out of clay. How clever is that? And he's done the equinox with the half sun and the half night equally balanced. Brilliant, Sebi. Gabriel and Lachlan, all of that pond that they made is edible. I think I would especially like the worm. Did you put some jelly worms in there, I think, for the tadpoles? Absolutely amazing. Right, I do have something at the end to show. So if you're someone who sent me a video, don't worry, we are going to be showing it. But let me show you what I have been making. Can I have a drum roll, please? Oh, ta-da! It doesn't look like much, does it? But this is part of my craft and something else that you can make. I'll show you the main part of what I made. It's still a little bit wet, so I haven't been able to put it all together. So this is the top of a magical staff. I've got my stick here that I'm going to attach it to when it's dry. I'm going to quickly show you how I made that and it, that will explain as well what on earth this is. So let's have a quick watch of what I made. So to make your wand or your trident or your magical staff, draw out whatever shape that you want on some old cardboard. I'm making mine quite big because I've got a big stick. Cut it out and remember it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be enjoyable. So don't worry about making things symmetrical or perfect. Then I collected together the things that I wanted to stick on it. So I've got some dried rose petals from my Mother's Day bouquet that I got and some leaves. I like the way the petals look like sunset almost. Yes, we still do have our Christmas tree lying around. So I got some of the bits of our Christmas tree and I don't usually like to use food, but we'd had a bit of a disaster with rice recently. So I dyed it green and then decided to use it for this craft. This is the clever part. We're going to make our own glue. So I've got one part flour and one part water. That's all it is. Now, some people heat it up. Some people add a bit of salt. You can experiment, but I wanted to keep it really, really simple. So I just mixed it up and I walloped it on that star. I'm not going for neat. I'm going for a nice thick layer of glue because some of the things I'm sticking on are quite heavy. So then I started sticking on my items. Now I want to do a pattern. You could stick them on anywhere that you wanted. One good idea is to arrange how you want your different things just on the table before you transfer it to your gluey shape. So you can have a play about, you can try some different shapes. Also because it's just cardboard and flour and water, it's quite easy to make quite a lot of different shapes. So you don't have to do a wand, you could do, um, crowns I guess you could do things to stick on the wall you could do whatever you fancied with this I can't wait to see what you come up with so then I added in my rose petals that had dried a little bit I tried to make sure I chose ones that had both of those two colors on because that was my favorite okay let's fast forward this bit this was a really relaxing activity actually I really enjoyed doing it and because of the type of glue I could imagine doing this out in the woods as well so then I added on my leaves as my like central part and it was easy to just pick, take bits off and put them back on again and then I sprinkled off that on that rice a bit like glitter and then you know what you do with glitter you shake it off at the end then I used my old journey stick from an activity that I'd done with Twinkle last summer and I decided that this, once it's dry, is where I'm going to attach my star. Okay, so on that theme of hocus pocus, you can make whatever you fancy. Let's get this up, put my face in. Oh, we've got some others that I missed. Tate and Olivia, look at these beautiful scraptastic birds. Absolutely fantastic, really inspiring as well. Right, oh, there's even more, do you me? I knew I had lots. Jaden has been busy cooking. Bella has got a beautiful pond picture there. Here we are, this is what we're going to be doing this week. Make a wand or a trident or a magical staff, whatever you want. Maybe with that DIY glue as well, making your own glue. Make a portion so you could do that however you wanted. 
please don't drink it. I don't want any of you turning into unicorns. You can add some wild horses to your virtual worlds. And this is something that you can do. And we're going to end here as well with Morgan's video. You can make a Pathfinder video. We're actually going to be on a break for quite a couple of, a couple of weeks. And then we've got a special Pathfinders. And then we'll be back for good. Um, but it would be amazing if some of those videos that I showed, like niche walks or storytelling, involve you. So I would absolutely love it if some of you did that. So we're going to have a look and see what Morgan has shared, and then I'll be saying goodbye. Here we go. I made a bird's nest, and I hope you like my sun and moon. How great is that, that he got the moon on the other side? I never thought of that. Brilliant, Morgan, and what a lovely way to end Pathfinders. Everyone have a great week and happy exploring.